G'day everyone, Blake here with another video and today I'm going to put two of the more common filtration options head to head in a filter showdown. Hopefully this will be the first in a number of videos which will compare common filtration options against each other and help you decide which one is going to be best for your needs. Okay, so sponge filters and hang on the backs are super, super common in the hobby and they do have positives and negatives. Getting started, we'll talk about sponge filters. Sponge filters are probably the most common filtration used in fish keeping today. And that's because they're extremely cheap to buy and they're extremely economical to run. A sponge filter like this, you can expect to pay $5, $10 each. So they're not like canister filters or anything else, but you're gonna have to shell out hundreds of dollars for each one of these. As well as this, especially when you have 40, 50, 60 aquariums, it can be really difficult to find power outlets for all those filters that you're gonna be plugging in. And this guy here is an air-driven filter, which means that we don't have to plug it into any electrical outlet. It, all that we have to do is attach a four millimeter airline hose into this top section here. Now, a lot of people get confused by how air coming out the top of this can help you to actually filter your aquarium. And it's quite a simple premise once you do understand it. It's actually not the air being coming up from here. What's, ha what's happening once you take the sponge off is that air is actually being fed down this pipe here and then being released at the bottom where it's coming up the same pipe. The way that it works, it's called an air lift system and the air basically brings water with it. Now, once we have all this air and water rushing through the top, you can see there's not much room for it to come through in there. So it's gonna be very directed and fast flowing out of there. It has no other choice than to have water come into it somehow. And that's where it comes in these side grates here. Now, it's not very effective as a filter like that. So of course we surround it by sponge. And that's a quick breakdown of how this filter works. By having water drawn through this sponge filter, through it simply having no other choice. That's where our debris and gunk is gonna get caught and where our biological um, bacteria is gonna grow and thrive and help to break down that nitrite and ammonia. So with that simple breakdown, you can understand how this filter could be an absolute game changer, especially if you wanna avoid plugging things and contributing to your power bill, and especially if you have what is very common in fish room setups, and that is a central air loop the general premise between an air loop is setting up one large aquarium air pump, having a loop of PVC around a fish room in which you can simply drill into it, attach an airline, attach that to one of these guys, and you're ready to go. And in no time, you can have one outlet powering hundreds, multiple hundreds of uh, filters in an instant. But if you don't have multiple aquariums, well, it can have its downsides as well. First of all, if you don't have an aquarium air pump or a central air loop, then you're gonna to have to source one of those and plug it in. And some of those smaller air pumps can be extremely noisy. If you've got a bedroom or some quiet area where you like to relax, setting up a sponge filter might not be for you because it's gonna have bubbles coming out the top, which as you can probably imagine, is gonna sound like a kettle's off in the background boiling all day. Bubbling moving water, whilst relaxing for some, mainly fish keepers, for those other loved ones in the house who are maybe not so aquarium friendly, they might find it really annoying and some might even find themselves rushing to the bathroom all the time. So for that reason, this guy might not be the quietest of filters. As well as that, they can be really, really difficult to, to clean. It's kind of notorious that people have trouble um, cleaning these guys. And once you've got this full of debris and muck, as soon as you touch it, it can actually release chocolate milk all through your aquarium. So the recommended way to clean these guys is to get an aquarium bag or some other large plastic implement, scoop the entire filter up underneath before releasing it out of your aquarium. Of course, as you can imagine, this involves getting elbows deep in your fish tank, spilling water everywhere, and potentially damaging carpet or other important things in the home. So it's definitely more of a fish room type activity. The good news is, is that there are a few customization options available now, whilst it is more limited to other filters like we'll talk about soon with the hang on back, in that now you can get fine sponge material like this one here, which you can see is quite fine. It's gonna do a really good job to get those fine particles out of your water. There's also coarse sponge material available, which I'll overlay in the video now, 
which are going to be a more long-term option and you're not going to have to clean it as much but you might see the odd bit of particle floating around in the water every now and then. Now something like this is going to clog up really fast and you'll have to squeeze it out maybe every couple of weeks or so depending on what you clean but it can also be really good for shrimp and things like that that are going to really like to graze on these surfaces. Another great thing about sponge filters is that they are definitely shrimp and fry safe. You're not going to have to worry about any small fish or shrimp getting sucked in here and uh, potentially meeting their demise through an impeller. Something like this is totally uh, non-mechanical so there's nothing like that to worry about. Since sponge filters push the water upwards, it's very hard to get flow in the aquarium using sponge filters alone. I have experimented with 90 degree elbows on top of the sponge filters before, but even that doesn't exactly have water moving around the aquarium too well. The last downside with sponge filters like this is that they're not great in small or shallow aquariums. There's definitely smaller options available just like this little guy here, but you can still see that there's gonna be quite a lot of height involved in order to effectively use this filter. Of course, you can take that uplift tube off, but as we mentioned, there's just not gonna be as strong of a flow of water coming out of there, and it's not gonna just be as aggressive with the filtering capacity as it is with the uplift tube on. So outside of that, of course, sponge filters are chock full of positives, but there's definitely applications where you might wanna consider a hang on the back filter. So today's sponge filter competitor is the hang on the back filter and this one here that I've got for an example today is the AquaClear 50. Now hang on the back filters are named as such because you might have guessed it, they hang on the back of your aquarium. So these guys are designed to have the aquarium glass here like so and this compartment here outside the rear of your fish tank. You can also hang it on the side or if you really don't care, you can definitely hang it on the front, but that's why they're called hang on the back filters. These guys are not air driven like the sponge filters. These guys use pumps and you can see this one here is located outside the aquarium on the underside. And of course we've got a plug that we're gonna plug into a power outlet. You might see on some hang on the backs that uh, the pump are here at the end of the intake. And that's for a reason which I'll discuss shortly. Now the good thing about hang on the back filters are that they're really easy to clean. They usually have a compartment like so that you can pull out, take your media and go off and clean it in a sink or whatever you like. Usually they'll come with different cartridges and stuff, but things like this I like because there's just a cage and you can put whatever you like and you can see I've just got a huge bit of uh, coarse sponge in mine. Now the way that hang on the back filters work is you'll have an intake tube here which is gonna suck water up you can definitely put a pre-filter on there if you do have small fish or shrimp. Just make sure that you get one sized appropriately. Water's gonna come up through here, trickle over into the back, and then eventually flow through here, through all your media, and then once it's gone through there, start to flow up, 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 and then overflow using this sort of waterfall system here at the front. So for that reason, if you're setting up a hang on the back filter like this, you're gonna to wanna to set it up that you've got your coarse media, fine media, and then maybe your biological media or your chemical media, like so. I see a lot of people setting them up the wrong way, where you'll have all of your ceramic rings at the bottom, then maybe some carbon, and then maybe some sponge. But this is all gonna get clogged up before it's had a chance to get filtered through the sponge. So keep that in mind. They flow from the bottom to the top. Some other downsides with hang on the back filters, apart from having to be plugged in, are that they're not even close to being as cheap as sponge filters. These guys here could range $30, $40. It really depends on how big of a hang on back system you get. And they do get quite big, big enough to handle large Oscars, big waste producers, common plecos, large aquariums. This guy here is more suited for your sort of 10, 15 gallon, that sort of thing. If you don't have it completely level on your aquarium, which you do so using this little foot here, if you, if you don't have the foot set up correctly and it's on an angle like so, I'm obviously exaggerating it for the purpose of this video, but what will happen is your filter media here will get full to the point that it starts to overflow out this way, especially if you've uh, overfilled the compartment here and it's clogged on this side. So be mindful and I always suggest actually under stocking how much media you put in here just as an extra preventative for leaks. The other potential is that the seal around the pump here might leak which can definitely happen especially 
if you're pulling it out to maintain it. So make sure that when you uh, reassemble it, there's a little rubber O-ring on the end of the impeller there. And that's all that is stopping any leaks from appearing at the bottom of your filter. And then the last way that this can leak is a crack in the body of your actual filter, which can definitely happen if you've got it in trafficable, trafficable areas where it can be knocked or hit with something. Outside of that, hang on back filters are super convenient in that you can easily access all this media and it's outside of your aquarium. So cleaning it is a really simple and straightforward process of just unplugging the filter. You can even take the whole thing out if you like, take it over to your sink and clean it out there. And you're not gonna have all this debris being stirred up like you are when you try to move a sponge filter. I actually think it's a really great recommendation to have a hang on the back filter on hand, even if you do run only sponge filters, because then on the day that you do clean all your sponge filters, this can be really great for cleaning up that debris really quickly. Especially if you're like me, you make videos or you've got a friend coming around, you might wanna check out your tanks. Something like this can do a really great job at making that water super clear. If I was gonna do that, I'd just empty this here, put some filter floss or some fine media in the back there, and it can be a really great water polisher, meaning that you have crystal clear water when your friends and family come around to check out your tanks. Hanging the back filters provide some good aeration into the aquarium. Having it up high enough will really help to oxygenate your aquarium and introduce some flow. Power consumption on hang on the backs, they're not the most convenient thing because when you think about it, it's gotta be powerful enough to lift water up this head height here and then get it through all this system. So this little fella here is five watts, which can add up quickly, especially if you've got bigger aquariums that you're gonna need larger wattage pumps, especially if you're, if you're running multiple of them. As well as that in events of a power outage, a lot of these guys don't actually um, continue siphoning. So what you'll find is if your power goes out overnight, you'll come back in the morning, it'll be gurgling, making it a lot of noise and water will probably be hanging around this point at the top of your water level and really struggle to get over the top there. The last point regarding hang on the back filters is if you do keep uh, shrimp or you've got something that might breed in the aquarium like guppies or other live bearers, keep in mind that anything that gets in this intake here is gonna head straight up this pipe and you can see when I take it out, it's gonna head straight into the impeller of the pump right there. So be mindful that any small shrimp that can get sucked inside the impeller grate here, especially if you don't use a um, intake sponge, which I certainly recommend, is gonna have a uh, potentially disastrous end. If you do use an intake sponge, just be mindful that there are another thing that you're gonna to have to clean. It kind of has the same downsides as sponge filters in that when you do go to clean them, they will create a bit of mess in the aquarium unless you scoop something underneath them. And the other thing is that they can clog up as well and uh, in increase the demand on your pump. So they can shorten the life of your um, hang on the back if it's not um, properly maintained. So there's a quick breakdown of what sponge filters do, how hang on the backs work, and last but not least, which one would I recommend for which situation? I think if you've got shrimp tanks or tanks where the inhabitants aren't gonna be big producers, or you've got a fish room running multiple tanks uh, that you don't have the power outlets for, definitely sponge filters are the way to go. These guys are really, really economical and provide some great biofilm and bacteria for things that are uh, not gonna clog it up real fast. And then if you've got some big, heavy, um, messy fish in an aquarium and you want it to be sparkling clean, definitely recommend going with the hang on the back filter, at least for this comparison. Or if you've got 10 or less aquariums, hang on backs could be the way to go. Hang on the backs are really, really convenient, easy to clean, and so long as you have the attention to keep an eye on things when the power goes out, or you don't have to plug in a thousand different things. It can be a real asset to your fish room, especially if you're interested in running carbon or other different uh, chemical filtration, this could be the way to go. So there you go guys, that's my comparison on sponge filters versus hang on the backs and when to use each of them. I get all my sponge filters from aquariumuniverse.com.au. If you want 10% off anything, you can head over there and enter the code BLAKESAQUATICS10 for 10% off your order. There's a huge range of options over there as well, such as hang on the back filters, canisters, and everything else that you'll need in between. 
Hopefully this has helped to solve some of your questions regarding these two methods of filtration. And if you've got some other comparisons that you've got going on in your head, feel free to hit subscribe because I'll have plenty more of these to come in the future. If you like the video, it always helps me out to hit like and the bell. And other than that, hopefully you have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.